Hey, welcome back everybody, and today we are going to look at installing the Verpal Counterbalance Kit on the uh, Helicopter Collective that they sell. And then we're going to take it for a spin in DCS, so uh, stick around. Alrighty, so before I get the Collective off of the chair, I'm going to show you guys how it's mounted and the solution that I came up with, because I think this is going to be useful for some of you guys. Because as it comes uh, from Verpal, it, it's meant to be mounted uh, to a horizontal surface, like on a chair. Uh, currently, I do not believe that they offer any sort of solution for mounting it on a vertical surface. So I had to get a little creative uh, in bolting it to the chair here. So uh, let me go ahead and show you that. All right, so here's the collective and the mount that it shipped with. Uh, uh, this is the mount that came with it in the box whenever I bought this. Uh, as you can see, this part of it is meant to be bolted like to the underside of a chair or a, any other horizontal surface, but they didn't really make any way of uh, mounting this to a vertical surface. So what I did was I got a little creative with the mount, I made a couple of extra holes. And what I did on the chair um, is mount this beam to the chair and let me show you that real quick what that is is a piece of aluminum extrusion is this is what this stuff is called and if you guys ever search for this 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 particular type is called 3030 uh, ex aluminum extrusion and it's called that because it's 30 millimeters wide and 30 millimeters tall so hence 3030 aluminum extrusion and this is able to be bolted and mounted in a variety of ways, and it's very useful stuff. And that's what I did here on the chair, is I just put a long enough piece, and I'll show on the other side here, is I just used some of the holes that were already pre-existing in the chair, and I used three holes on this side, and then the and some appropriate length uh, bolts here with some flange washers to go inside uh, the little channel so it can lock into place. Sorry about that noise. So the bolts, uh, the flange nuts, and in this one's case a couple of convenient pieces of wood because as you can see there's a slight angle to the surface of the mount. But um, this is a lot better than that, uh, than that than my previous mount which I have pictured on screen where I used clamps <laughs> and another block of wood. This is a lot more solid and also gives me more options. And like you, like you see, it's longer than the chair. So if I ever decide to mount the Apache grip onto this, all I have to do is just slide this a little further back and now I have room for the Apache grip. Uh, that's the Hawk 60 grip that's currently on this. So anyway, just wanted to highlight and showcase the mounting structure that I got. This was a this was a, not a terribly expensive solution, and uh, this stuff is easily found online. And then it's just a matter of just sourcing up the right bolts for putting it to the chair and mounting it to the rail. So all right, let me get this off, and we'll go move on to the counterbalance kit. Alrighty everybody, welcome back, and here we are, we have the collective that has been taken off of the chair. We got a nice little work light to help light up the area. We got our counterbalance kit, and I got a handful of tools. So, let's go through this. So, here's here's how the counterbalance kit comes as it ships. So, go ahead and open this up. Oh, definitely don't want to let your uh, your pets eat that. That's that desiccant, that silica gel stuff. All right, we got some hardware, and we actually have the counterbalance kit. Awesome, some packing material. Um, there is not an instruction book in here. There's a scan code though. Let's scan that and let's see what we get. We'll use the uh, iPad of knowledge. Let's see what we got. There we go. Alright. Takes you to a list of various hardware. Hmm. 
Counterbalance kit is not in this list. Give me a second, guys. Let me do some searching. All right, guys, I'm back. Now, after searching on their website, I did find the manual for it. It isn't with that scan code that's on the box. So that's, that's a little something that uh, hopefully that they correct. But here is the manual. We're going to go through this, and I'll walk you through on how to uh, install the uh, counterbalance kit. Now, if you're wondering why they produce the counterbalance kit in the first place, uh, I'll get that out of the way. I will say that this is a fantastic piece of flight sim hardware. The friction in this, though, is probably the only complaint that I have ever had on this thing. Um, the friction, and you can see the friction lock. Let me pull that cap off. So you get a friction adjustment on this side and this side of the collective and it's just um it's just two friction blocks that are sandwiched together and it, and you have to tighten and loosen these in uh with equal turns in order to adjust it and this to in order to get this thing to stay put you have to have enough friction on it so that it doesn't fall down under its own weight I have mine set to that just that point. The, the the only thing with that is as you try to move it, especially with fine precision, it tends to feel a little sticky, like you gotta give it a little extra force in order to get it to move again. So that that's probably the number one complaint that I've ever seen on this collective is just that the friction is just a little too much in order for this to not fall down under its own weight. That's what this kit is supposed to address by adding a counterbalance spring so you can run the frictions a lot looser. I can, I totally dig that, that they offered a solution to an existing problem rather than coming up with a new control and leaving all the old controls left hanging. It's really cool how they're supporting uh, their their hardware with creative solutions like this. I totally respect that. That's awesome. All right, so let's get into this. All right, step one, we got to remove this big bolt here in the center. All right, next we got to remove all these Phillips screws that that main bolt was covering. All right, so once those are out, now we can set the main mount off to the side. All right, so next we got to take out these two screws and remove them entirely. That is not the right size. Where it is? Okay. All right. All right, now we need a part. It says to install the spacer. which is this ring right here. So that's a spacer, doesn't look like it goes in any particular orientation per the bangle there. It just says to put it on. And this doesn't appear to be, it just looks uh, like it's the exact same on both sides. So spacer goes on. All right, so next we get the counterbalance and this will likely fall out on its own we can set that off to the side it's not calling for that now all right so now we mount this and about right here and we mount it with the two screws that we just took out all right just torque them up a little bit Nice and snug. Definitely don't want to over tighten it since there is a lot of aluminum in these. You don't. You definitely don't want to strip that out. All right. Next, we need the spool that goes right here in the middle of the spring tensioner, and this little anti-friction. Um, what do they call that? The anti-friction insert needs to face up in whatever orientation to the mount that it mounts to. That's where that has to go. And then it says to reinstall the mounting plate. So that's what I'm going to do now. 
this is going to involve. Now that involves, you cannot reuse the screws that came out originally since it's a lot longer now. So you gotta, you gotta use these longer screws that came in the bag. There we go. Trying to get these holes lined up first. Alright, I got one started. Oop, found number two there. There we go. And I like to start these kind of things by hand. So you definitely can feel if they're cross-threaded or not. Feels good so far. Alright. Nice and snug on all four. That feels good, about equal on all and they are flush with the surface of the mount. That's important right there because that washer needs to cover them. And then we gotta get rid of that. We take out that bolt and we gotta use the longer one that they supplied with the kit. Again, we cut to account for that spacer. But we can reuse the washer. And snug. Here we go. Perfect. Alright, so now at this point, we have to flip it over. And we have these six screws on the on the front side of this to take off because we gotta take out the it looks like we gotta take out the cam that's on the inside of this. So these so these four screws on the left, these two screws on the right, and then the center screw right here in the middle. So I'm going to start with that one. So I'm going to crack that one loose. And the last bolt. Here we go. Nice. Set that to the side. We'll need that. All right. So to make this easier on us, because... I'm reading ahead in the instructions and for this spring to actually hook on to wherever it needs to hook on to for the counterbalance effect, we need to raise the collective beyond its normal range of movement. So we got to take out the cam plate that's inside here. And normally you would only be in here during the install. This one. And like I said, you normally would only be in here during the install. To s this is the cam that sets the range of travel for the collective lever in and of itself. I have the large one that's installed, so I have the longest range of movement on this. So, and to me, that adds that much more precision. But your install may not allow that much range of movement. You may have to put in either the medium or the small cam in order to set the good range of movement without hitting anything on, on your on your setup. All right, so there we go. Set this to the side. We will need that here and later. All right, I'll show you this. Hopefully this is clear on your screen, but we want to lift the collective until that spring tab lines up against one of those holes like so, because we're going to sandwich that spring with a spring washer, a nut, and a bolt. Whoops. Sorry, guys. So looking at mine, it looks like that corner hole right there would... Uh, let's see if I can get the right angle. So, yeah, this little corner hole... Come on. That corner hole right there would be perfect for this. So you guys can see the spring arm right there. I need to raise the collective to get that spring arm near that hole. So to do that, now we just lift the collective like so. And then grab that hardware that's in this kit. 
might be easier if you pass the mold through the hole first so you guys can have something to pivot against and line up with. There we go. This might take some trial and error, but it looks like we got it locked in now. Nice. And then one 8mm nut. Alright. So now, we just got to tighten. Nope. Aha! That's the right one. Find the right wrench. No. There we go. Tighten it up, and I believe you're good to go. Now one addendum to that step that I just showed you. So here is the friction clutch, as they call it. It's this aluminum block and this aluminum block here. And you guys can see, and I got pointed out, the there's the upper friction adjustment, and this is the lower friction adjustment. And they work together by either increasing or decreasing how tight they are against the pivot. And this is why you have to adjust them together. So if I give this one up here a quarter turn in either direction, I have to give this one down here a quarter turn in the exact same direction. Uh, and same thing, if I give it a half turn either way, half turn on that one as well. And part of this install is... Um, tightening up the counterbalance spring while loosening these so you can adjust the feel of your collective pivot to your taste. Alright, now if you forgot which way your travel cam goes, the lump portion of it goes towards the, uh, the handle. Like so. Find the two screws. Oh, and time out, time out. I see a loose part. All right. Here, I'll come zoom in for you guys, but these bolts that hold in the travel cam have a lock washer that's supposed to stay with them. Mine came loose. So I had one falling loose. I see the other one loose in the bottom of my collective grip here. So I'm just going to shake that out gently. There it is. Make sure all your parts are accounted for. Remember, there's some circuit boards inside there. You don't want loose metal shorting stuff out. All right. There we go. Get the screw started. All right, so now at this point we put the side plate back on and we are just about done with the install of this. And next is just to uh, adjust the, the frictions to how we want them. All right, and there we have it, one counterbalance. So at this point, I'm going to flip this over and make it ready in order to adjust the frictions. So, how I understand it at this point is these can get loosened, which was the whole idea behind this thing in the first place, to allow the counterbalance to take uh, some of that off of the frictions to, in order to keep this thing from falling down. And then at the same time, find the right tension on the spring in order to support this without overdoing it, I should say. so. All right, let's get this back on the chair and we'll go from there. All right, so I have the collective mounted back on the chair and I got the spring tension set with what I think is the right amount of tension on the friction drums. And I gotta say, this is so darn smooth. It stays in place and I'm only able to move it with one finger and it does not take much force to move, and it stays exactly where I want it. Uh, one thing I do want to note, and they say this at the end of that manual, is whenever you're done flying, raise this all the way up, as that takes some of the tension off of the spring. 
and it extends the life of the spring. So when it's all the way down and it's at its most tensed position. All right, guys. So I am itching to get into DCS to fly with this. This is the, this is going to be the first flight with the counterbalance kit installed. So I am really looking forward to this. Now, since the last time that I flew with the collective that you guys saw, um, in that video, you guys saw me flying with the Huey and then the Apache. Well, I've gotten a couple of helicopters since then. Now, I do want to preface this and say that while I am generally not a fan of Soviet aircraft, it is just not my cup of tea. However, I had a couple of squadron mates uh, that kept telling me, you got to try this helicopter, man. You got to try this thing. So what did I get, might you ask? Well... Here we are, and yes, I am in the hind. Now, I was reluctant to buy this helicopter for the longest time. That, like I said, I generally don't. Soviet aircraft just aren't my thing. However, a couple of my squadron mates talked me into it after talking this thing up so much, said, you gotta try this thing, it is, it is a blast. And they were right. I absolutely love this thing. And it is so fun to fly and it is very effective at what it does. It's not quite, it is definitely not an Apache uh, with all the systems, the data link, all the fun weapons and such, but damn, is this thing fun. I love it. So we are here at Cabaletti and headed off to a target area that is very likely familiar with a lot of you, that abandoned X-shaped runway that is just off to the Southwest. So let's go ahead and Take off the brakes, give it some collective, and already I can definitely feel this thing is smooth. Pick up some forward speed. We're just doing a roll and take off. Petrovic is warming up the weapons as we speak. Pick up a little bit more. There we go. Gear up. Forward airspeed. Looking good. Three amber lights, all gears are retracted. Alright, let's get some speed going. Passing 150 kilometers an hour. Commando weapons ready. Thank you, Petro. And just getting all my trimmers. I like the trim in this. This thing is just fun to fly. It actually has like a fixed wing style aircraft trimmer so I can uh, trim it for nice straight and level. Pick it up a little bit. It's just, this thing's just fun to fly. Now it took me roughly a week to learn how to fly this thing and about that long also for becoming combat effective in it. So. It, really did not take me long to pick this aircraft up. If you're good at the Huey, you'll probably like this. This is just a lot heavier. And it flies like it's a lot heavier. Like I said, man, is this thing effective. Especially against, like, infantry and small arms. This, you can get... You can take all sorts of ground fire and this thing just keeps on going. Let me turn on my air-to-air -air as well. Got a couple of R60 Atoll missiles hanging on, or not Atoll, uh, AFID missiles, sorry. Now Petro did call weapons ready. Let's have them start looking. Observe activated. Looking for targets. Turn down the fixed sight a little bit. There we go. Oh, he's found some T-55s. Tracking target. In range. Firing. Rifle. Target destroyed. 
Yeah. Searching for targets. Target acquired. Target in range. Launch. You're definitely not fly. Target destroyed. You're definitely not fighting this thing like the Apache. Oh. Target acquired. Engaging in range. Target destroyed. Hostile ground fire right ahead. Thank you. Let's let's evade out of here. Like I said, like I was trying to say, you're definitely not fighting this like the Apache, where you come up behind some trees, hover, and pop up and attack. You are always on the move in the hive. It's, you are definitely doing the run and gun, but it's fun. Uh, it's just an absolute joy, especially once you get the hang of it, because so many different weapons you can carry, the anti-tank missiles, tons of rockets. This thing can even carry bombs. And then it's got a very potent 30 millimeter cannon. All right, let's turn back in. Meanwhile, the whole time with this counterbalance on the collective, it, it feels so much smoother. I am so digging this thing. Observe all searching. Alright, find me something to destroy, Petro. Tracking target. In range. Launch. No more missiles ahead. Amanda. Thank you, no more ATGMs, understood. Yeah, good effects on target. Observe off. I love how they gave Petrovic some character, like he's he's got like they put some emotion into him, like just now you heard where he's pretty he's pretty happy that uh that he's picking out targets. Uh you can definitely sense some fear in his voice too, like if he's if he catches a missile launch and it it's really nice to see. He's just not like a static monotone AI. It's they did Eagle Dynamics did pretty good with Petrovich, I gotta admit. Alright, so we're out of ATGMs. Let's switch to something uh, let's switch to cannons. Like I said, this 30mm can just chew up anything that's lightly armored and unarmored. Oh, helicopter. Weapons off. Let's select an air-to-air -air missile. Wait for the yellow light next to my gun sight. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. Fox 2. Oh, and it missed. Alright. Switch to rack number one. That's my uh, left stub wing. That was a very hasty shot. I'm not surprised that I missed on that one. Now, this thing does turn better going to the left than it does going to the right. And the visibility is actually a lot better out of the left too. So, it's just situation dependent. There he is. Just my two o'clock, one o'clock. Dead ahead. Yellow light. Got tone. Fox 2. And I missed. Alright, let's just gun this guy. And I will go high rate of fire on the cannon. Again, this collective makes this so much fun. Uh oh. Yeah, take that. All right, let's go back to slow rate of fire on the cannon. We have 90 rounds remaining. When 
this thing is light, it can definitely be pretty nimble. Not as maneuverable as the Huey, but you can make her dance around the sky. There's one. Two. Three. And four. <laughs> Oh, this thing is an absolute hoot to fly, I gotta admit. So much fun. Alright, let's do one more click. Let's go rockets. That's the last batch of targets that I have set up in this mission. Here we are. And... Let's see how we did there. Good. Let's just circle around and do a quick damage assessment. Mop up any that remain. The rockets in this thing aren't terribly accurate, but uh, close range. Yeah, they do the job. Check that out. 444 on that run, too. Awesome. Alright, weapons off. Alright, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that, and as, as well as learning how to install the counterbalance kit on your collective, if you have it. If you don't have one of these, and you want one, I do recommend it, because this thing makes helicopter flying a lot more enjoyable. So, with that, thank you guys for watching, we'll see you next time, and I'll see you this coming weekend at the hangar.